in song. Um, I thought that might be fun and interesting and a good sh video kind of artifact might come out of it. Mm. Yeah, I, I... I'm with you, Bill. I think that we um, have stumbled on, quote, the way to do things. Uh, uh, via a fairly ad hoc evolutionary process that um, has us now stuck in a place where we kind of ignore art and creativity in general. So uh, I think you're right on by emphasizing that uh, we need to break out of our rut. Yeah, I, I think I'd be more generous. I don't think we've cut it out. I think we just, I don't know, we have to just. I think Kilu said it well in terms of different ways that different populations of people look at things. And we're such a data-driven Western world that there's a, a distortion of the balance between the data side and the story, allegory, metaphor side of communicating the, con the full richness of the content and the impact on people. And so I think trying to figure out how to rebalance that is probably worth some effort. Yeah, I just wanna share one. I don't know if any, has anybody here done the Alexander training? Mm -hmm. Alexander method, taking lessons. So the I, thing I remember about that from the one the teacher I had when I was, you know, it's like, you know, let your neck be free, let your head go. And she's, and she's looking at me, she goes, don't do anything. <laughs> had to say it over and over again. Don't do anything. It's a very interesting kind of, in a way, it's kind of like mind work in it, but it's this thing it's, about it's, stop doing just you know a lot of the a lot of the alexander techniques i did some of that when i was heavy into music and a lot of it has to do with getting out of the left brain thinking and getting into right brain feeling and and experiencing but if you think about the experiences you defeat the purpose <laughs> anyway I, I, that, that's maybe a talk that i don't want to you know no, well, that's I think, perfect. I that's a perfect, perfect com conversation. Yeah, thank you, Bill. And we'll we'll let that lead us um, lead us right in here. So, um, twelve thirty five. Hello, everybody. Um, it is Wednesday, the twenty fifth, and we're here for the start of our second cycle, transitioning from uh, a short six week social experiment that we ran. Um, and we're here with some of the people that are wanting to carry that forward into an ongoing effort. So thank you everybody for, for being here, really excited about today and the start of this transition into to phase two. So with your permission, let's just uh, pick up on Bill's exhortation to be still and not do anything and kind of arrive. Um, going forward, um, I'm thinking if with your permission that maybe I'll start these um, Zoom rooms 10 minutes early at 12.20 for anybody that wants to, to come kind of show up and chat. Um, we'll maybe do about five minutes of meditation from like 12.30 to 12.35 so that we can start the meeting right on time at 12.35. Um, as we get a little structured, um, there were some people that noted that making and keeping time commitments was probably important. So try to get a little better at that starting right at 12.35. Um, but please show up early, um, join for a few minutes of meditation at 12.30 to arrive. And if you'd like to come early for a cup of coffee, just to chat and be human with each other, that would be wonderful as well. So does that sound, does that sound agreeable to everybody? Mm -hmm. um, okay, beautiful. And then we'll try to end sharp at two o'clock with the, with the planned programming. And then I'd invite anybody that would like to remain after we'll, we'll do 30 minutes of focused time from two to 2.30 that'll also end on time. And that'll be specifically to do a retro on the meeting to look at what happened, what we can do better next time and do some basic planning for the week to come. 
So I think some of those, those practices will kind of help us to get into a little better rhythm. So if anybody would like to remain from two to 2.30 for a retro and planning, um, please feel free. So let's uh, just open with a few minutes of, of meditation here. Feel free to we'll just, just maybe go for four or five minutes, but feel free to turn off your cameras if you like. I'm going to turn off my camera. Just take a few, few breaths and arrive. Just encourage you to try to lay down whatever else has been happening this week and just be present here with yourself. If you don't have a personal practice, some breath work can be really helpful. So if you, if you don't have anything else you do, you can take some four, seven, eight breaths, breathe in deep for four seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, seven counts, and then breathe out for eight counts and just repeat that four or five times and it helps reset your psychophysiology. If you're a praying person, I just invite you in your own way silently just to offer up a, a short prayer for our time together today. Just invite you to come back, turn on your cameras. 
Looking forward to seeing everybody. All right, beautiful, hello. I'm gonna send us right out into some breakout groups just to uh, be human and get connected. You're welcome to um, use that time in any way you want, but we're gonna be doing a little bit of work with story today. So uh, if you don't have a better prompt in your room, I'll invite you to answer a couple questions. One, what's something great that happened to you? What's the best thing that happened to you this week or that you experienced? And then second, um, what story are you bringing in with you? What story are you telling yourself about why you're here today? So what's the best thing that happened to you this week? And what story are you telling yourself about why you're here today? And I will formulate these rooms so that there is about three to four people per room. And we'll take about 10 minutes. So everybody has two, three minutes to share. And I will look forward to seeing you back here soon.
Hey, Forrest. Hey Thanks there. Thanks for dropping in despite your busy schedule. Yeah, yeah. It's always a, a pleasure to be here, that's for sure. All right. Beautiful. Welcome back. Um, so let's take just a couple of minutes here. Is, were there any um, reflections from the rooms? Maybe just one person from each room or so, is there any common themes or reflections that arose in those stories? Let's see, I'm gonna have to pick on someone. Um, Trey, may I have your permission to invite your sense making on any common threads of the stories in your room? Sure, I think, um... I, I, if I was to draw a common theme across what everyone shared, it has a lot to do with the internal and the being of the bee and how that ripples out into the doing of the do and how that creates an influence, not only inside of our families, but inside of our communities and how um, despite the discomfort that comes from those choices and those conversations that there's a lot of good and there's a lot of encouragement. Beautiful, thank you, Trey. If anybody doesn't know Trey, this is Trey. She's wonderful, welcome. Uh, let's see, Marianne, may I invite your sense making from your room? Yeah, it, it actually builds on what Trey was saying. Um, it just, it feels so good to be part of this group and, and meeting and working with so many people who are doing such incredible, important work um, and then aligning it all because we, we, we won't get anywhere working in silos. So the fact that we're really trying to have a common purpose with common metrics will make us get there much faster. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Marianne. Um, Kilo, if you weren't in Marianne's room, can I invite your sense making from your room? Sure, and uh, it it was it was wonderful in our room. It was definitely a theme of wholeness as well as the importance of little things and how important they are also to the big big things. Like for example, big thing being bumping into someone. Little thing is what made that possible or what called call that forward. And feel free to jump in others in the room around that, as well as the separate reflections of the importance and the rising of the feminine energy, as well as closings and completions, including completions of, you know, what our kids have been up to and, and just completions and being with it and new ways of, new ways of, I don't know, new ways of being and holding. Those were uh, three lucky guesses. Anybody else from another group that would like to bring some sense making in? I can share, I guess, what's, what transpired in our room. Thanks, um, yes. um, Yeah, so in our room, we talked about different, our different perspective of who we are and why we're here and realizing that all of us are on different parts of the journey and it's okay wherever we are on the journey, it's okay. And that's the realization. But knowing that there's something of why we here. Yeah, amazing, wonderful. Is there is that all the groups or is there one more group out there? I think that, I think that might be urban. Beautiful, well, welcome. Um, I'll share just briefly the story that I'm bringing into as, as to why I'm here. 
Um, I, I know that some people have been, uh, Gil said it well, he said it's, he, he was experiencing some mix of, forget, forget how he put it, but awe, curiosity, excitement, and skepticism or something along those lines. Um, and so I think that's uh, just like Lisa was saying, we're all at, at different places. And so I think that bringing this understanding together, but the story I tell myself about why I'm here is, is something like um, we're at a critical moment in history that I think will be looked back on as the moment where humanity decided for many generations to come, what kind of a world that we were all going to be dwelling in and what kind of a future our children and grandchildren were going to be experiencing. Um, I believe there's a, I believe there's more at stake than we could possibly know. Um, I observe a kind of total set of global crises that I believe are integrated and flowing from the same basic issue that's our way of being and relating to each other as a human species. I perceive a total set of global goals that flow from basic heart of love and goodwill that we would all want for anybody that we loved. And I believe we should do everything we can in our power to accomplish those. Um, and I think together we can co-create a future that's that's better in every way than the past that we're, we're leaving behind. And the, the basic observation is that maybe the existing institutions and structures are too politically divided and dysfunctional to accomplish everything that, uh, that we just articulated. And so it's up to us, um, just it's up to us, whoever that us is, the, the good people of the cities and towns and villages around the world to figure out how we're gonna come together, organize ourselves, and in addition to helping each other succeed in our individual lives and our individual families and our individual organizations, figure out how we can also, like Marianne was saying, you know, stack up and align all those efforts and goals to succeed in the one overarching thing that unites us all um, at this moment in history. So that's a story that I tell myself while we're here. Um, and so I thought we'd try a little exercise because these um, related to story. Um, and the, what I understand of stories is that we, we fundamentally make sense of our world in something like a narrative structure, and we end up existing in those narrative structures. And my understanding is that those stories that we exist in are unique to each of us. And there's something like a, a footprint or a, Gil, thanks for being here. I appreciate you, you popping in. Much love. Those um, those stories are something like a like a fingerprint or like a unique energy signature, and they're they're forged by both our unique being and all the experience built up through all the experiences in our life that we've had to make sense of. And so each time we've had good experiences, traumatic experiences, trying experiences, those have all shaped the stories that we tell ourselves about. Um, maybe a few fundamental things, but maybe it's a story about something like identity, like who we are. Maybe it's a story about something like our present moment, where we are. Maybe it's a story about a past, like how we got here. And maybe it's a story about a future, where we're going. So those, those stories in my experience about, about who we think we are, where we are, how we got here, where we're going, why it all matters, you know, what's worth sacrificing for, all those kind of things end up basically defining how we make sense of the world. And it, and it seems from, from what I can tell of both psychological and spiritual study that those, story, those narrative structures we exist in are almost a precursor to perception. Like we, we don't objectively perceive the world. We, we perceive through almost like a user interface that has to do with space time and the stories that we're bringing. And so when we look around at a, a dysfunctional and divided world and people whose lives and families and countries and global communities are, are fractured in many ways, 
and we look around at some of the things we see people believing, it's, it's sometimes hard to understand how someone could perceive reality so differently. So I think if we're going to be able to forge a community that persists over time, we're going to have to figure out how to sort out the stories we're telling ourselves and how each of our individual stories relates to some overarching and uniting meta story and framework and philosophy and set of values that that we can find ourselves in. Um, and so I'd invite you, uh, wherever you are, we'll do something kind of different than we've done before. But I think this is uh, really important as we kind of transition from a short six week experiment into a longer term attempt to build a community and build some kind of a, a federation that's actually capable of getting strong enough to to do what we outlined um, to, to start sorting these out. So I just invite you to take a minute and, and pull up a, um, a note taking or writing device of some kind. If you're comfortable with a pen and a pad of paper, grab that. If you're uh, comfortable on your cell phone, grab that. If you're comfortable with note taking device on your computer. So I'll just give everybody kind of a minute. I want to, uh, at, at Wendy's suggestion and, and others, um, it was observed that we come into basically each experience with some story that we're telling ourselves. As a result of engaging in the experience, we're transformed and our story's transformed and we leave with a, with a subtly different story. So at the, at the outset here, I thought I'd just invite us to take, um, take a few minutes here to, to do a little writing and document the stories that we're coming in with so that six weeks from now we can we can kind of compare the stories that we're entering the next cycle with all right so um as we begin this cycle the first question is to write on is what story are you telling yourself about you personally individually and i invite you to to reflect on on a couple of things and we'll maybe give this like five minutes of space to answer the following four questions and I'll put them in the chat. So what's the st story you're telling it yourself about who, let's see, I'm gonna write this differently. What is the story you are telling yourself about who you are, where you are, how you got here, and where you are going. This is gonna be a little challenging if you're not used to writing and I invite you to reflect on this later. The prompts will be there, but let's just take like five minutes and just, just do a quick, quick reflection.
give you another 60 seconds or so to finish up your thoughts. All right, if you have any incomplete thoughts, maybe just make some, some shorthand notes or so, and you can come back. Wendy's, uh, Wendy offered us a, a respectful hint in chat to put some flesh on the bones of your story. Uh, to provide the supporting context. So we're, we're a little short on time to do that um, to do that here, but I'd encourage everybody to to kind of go back. And Wendy, if you wanted to um, post later into Mattermost or whatever, some suggestions for people to process their stories, welcome you to do that as well. So we're gonna we're gonna repeat this exercise. Um, and and this time we're gonna we're gonna tell a story, we just told a story about who we are and where we think we are. Now let's do that same thing and let's tell a story about the human species. So what's the story that you're bringing in today about who we are as a human species, where we are as a human species, how we got here and where we're going? And as you do this, try not to idealize it. Try to just dig up from your subconscious what, what that story might be or the narrative that might be running in your head.
Let's go give it just another 60 seconds or so here and finish up your thoughts. A little more time on this one. If you have any other incomplete thoughts, just maybe j jot down some bullets that you can come back to a little later. All right, coming back together here. We're gonna repeat this. Uh, repeat this exercise one more time. And so there's uh, there's you know seven, 17 people on the call here today. There's uh, a couple dozen more who can't participate on Wednesdays, but would like to. Um, so we've got you know whatever we've got thirty or fifty or sixty or whatever people of goodwill around the world who are coming together. So let's repeat that exercise. Um, what are you telling yourself about us as an emerging community of goodwill? What, what story are you telling yourself about why we're together and what we're here to do? Same questions, who are we? Where are we? How did we get here? Where are we going?
took about another 60 seconds or so on this. You're finished with your notes, you can start look back over them and kind of think about how those things match up and align. Any remaining thoughts, just jot down a few bullets you can come back to. Okay, and coming back together. So, so there's some story that we're telling ourselves about ourselves, where there's some story we're telling ourselves about humanity, and there's some story that we're telling ourselves about who we are and community and what our role is compared to those different levels. So the next, the next question is, what is the story you are telling yourselves about your agency in each of the three areas above? So what's, what I mean by agency is your ability to consciously choose, create, and change or transform each of those areas. I just encourage you to think a little bit deeper than you are already about this question. What's like genuine and deeply, what's the story that you're telling yourselves about your agency and your own life and how that unfolds into the future? This group and how that unfolds into the future. Hum human species and its state the future you even expand that out over time like what what's the story you tell yourself about the agency you have on the human species seven generations from now So a follow-on question is, 
There's just two more questions. So we'll wrap this up in the next few minutes. If you do not, if the story you're telling yourself does not give you complete agency, complete conscious free will and agency in any of those layers of stories, who has the agency if it's not you and why? the story the story you're telling yourself about agency in any of those three levels doesn't give you complete free will and conscious agency who has the agency and why Vincent and Elliot, welcome. We're, we're doing um, some work on stories. So we'll, we'll be back together here in just a couple of minutes. Okay, beautiful. So the final question, and then there's one bonus question that you don't have to, to answer. But the, the final, final question for this section is, in light of everything that you just wrote down, if there were two or three areas you felt most passionate about and most qualified to collaborate in, what would they be? They could be, make that as wide as you want, but if based on those stories of what we're here to do together, and who you are uniquely. If there were two or three areas you were most passionate about collaborating in, qualified for, what would they be? Maybe another 60 seconds or so on that. And I encourage you to be imaginative and childlike in this. Bill mentioned art and poetry at the beginning. Okay, and then one bonus question, then we'll go to the next round. And if you're not, uh, if you're not willing to be a little challenged psychologically, don't answer this. Um, if you are, it's just a bonus question if you're comfortable. In order to be loved and accepted, 
I must blank. Question is, in order to be loved and accepted, I must, and then fill in the blank. You're not gonna share these answers, so just answer that as genuinely as you can. If you haven't thought about this question before and you're willing to think about it, it might be one of the most important questions you can ask yourself. All right, Does anybody, would anybody like another 60 seconds on that question? If you're ready to come back. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so if this is gonna work over the long term, what we're gonna have to be able to do is we're gonna have to be able to align our individual vision and stories of our life with the vision and stories that we're telling in different small groups that we're participating in, with the vision and stories we're telling ourselves about who we are at the highest levels of abstraction and where we're going. And, and aligning those stories is really critical because that's kind of why our world frays and falls apart is if we can't find our unique expression within these various stacked layers, we end up disintegrating and pulling apart. And so um, we'll revisit these questions, I think, and we'll probably get even more intelligent with the questions over time. But I'm sensing there needs to be a process where everybody that we reach out to and, and invite to um, begin cooperating and participating and making com keeping commitments, we'll have, to, we'll have to develop a really smart way to invite everybody to tell their stories and to progressively revisit those over time as we, as we navigate together. So in this next stage, this is gonna work long-term. The hypothesis, Pete, maybe you could write this hypothesis in because uh, I'm gonna steal your words. Um, the hypothesis is that if this is gonna work long-term, we're gonna need to decentralize and federate. So if something like this, if the human species were going to come together to solve the grand challenges and accomplish the global goals, we're going to need to decentralize and federate. So what that would mean is that as this grows, there's very little work that's going to get done in Wednesday meetings. These meetings will get larger and larger. And we'll have to figure out how to make them more and more meaningful at scale and inspirational and informational. But nearly all the work's going to happen in decentralized, autonomous, self-directing small groups who forge fields of function and trust and can make and keep commitments to each other in small groups of five or 12 people. And then who can also begin to make commitments between those small groups of five or 12 people and who can also make and keep commitments to the whole, the highest aggregate level as we, as we try to navigate our collective vessel. So I would love to emerge from this week with everybody engaged in at least one small group of five to six people in an area that you feel passionate about and qualified to collaborate in. Um, and that, that seems like it's gonna probably be kind of the, the minimum requirement for us to, to be functional together. So let's do a, let's do a waterfall. Um, and if you could write into the chat, those, those two or three areas that you're most passionate about and feel qualified to collaborate in, Let's take, uh, let's take like the next 
let's take the next um I'm going to give this five minutes, actually, because I think it's worth it, because we might be uncomfortable knowing how to express this. So I'm going to actually set the timer for five minutes. And in your own chat, don't publish them yet. Just try to figure out how you would vulnerably articulate to the group in a childlike, playful, imaginative, as free and vulnerable a way as you're comfortable. What's uniquely inside of you that you would most want to collaborate with others on in service of what you think we're here to do together? Sorry, I broke the rule. I tried to hit enter and it published. Zoom, you have to do uh, control enter instead of shift enter like everybody else. Control it, so or, would that be command to enter on a Mac? It's actually control, I think. Oh, control enter. Okay, got it. Thank you, Pete. So I don't know what it is on Windows. Or write it in another app and copy and paste it over. So Jordan, what in fact is the ask? And if I'm gonna what, play kindergarten here, I need to know. Yeah, what yeah, okay, is. yes. So what would, based on the uniqueness of who you are, what would be the top two or three areas that you would be most passionate about collaborating with others? I apologize. I, for my complex way of speaking, get better at that. It's just like enter now, wait for a signal, unplug the dam. I don't know what we're doing. Got 40 seconds left on our five minute timer. I think a, a few people hit return before the cascade, but it, it is what it is. All right, 15 seconds left. We want to finish up and we're going to do a waterfall cascade.
go. Amazing. Okay, beautiful. Anybody need a, a little more time? Everybody got their, got their answers in? Okay, beautiful. So since we're gonna end on time today and we have 17 minutes left, um, I think what's gonna be best is if we, um, if we do collective sense making on this this week, so we actually have time to process. And, um, and so what I'd suggest is we, uh, we distribute this, this chat back out to everybody. Um, and so, and then what we can look at is how to like try to listen to the heart of what each other is saying and see if we can have come up with a little configuration of circles that gives everybody the right amount of participation that, that they kind of want. Um, okay, so I wanna, um, spend the remaining time kind of uh, talking about how we can get into action and start a little mini network of commitments made and kept. Um, this came up a little bit on our OGM call, Jerry um, and Pete and the other people that were there. Um, and so the idea is how do we form like a minimum viable prototype of this idea of collectively stewarding commitments we can make towards each other and whatever resources that we, we might have available. So I'm gonna make, um, make a proposal um, and everybody's free to accept or reject that proposal. Um, so I'm trying to think about how to start and advance. Um, we know that if we're moving forward, we're gonna to have to decentralize and federate. We're gonna to have to get resources flowing so we can create an economy that can begin to measure and propel things. And we know that we're gonna to have to work on setting up and forming these small pods or circles so that as we grow exponentially over time, we have the infrastructure in place where everybody can be engaged in the, the focus small groups, circles, teams, sovereigns, pods, those are all words that mean approximately the same thing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, um, I don't have these written down, but I'm gonna just say this off the, top of my, off the top of my head. I do have one thing written down. It feels like in order for us to forge a, a coherent structure that's like identifiable and can move, we need something like a overarching and uniting meta story Seems like we need some kind of a overarching, um, I don't know how to say this, but like, don't know what it is, but it's some way to be identified. Um, I guess that's, I guess that might be similar to the identity question that, that we asked about, like, who are we? Um, we need some kind of overarching and uniting philosophy in minimum viable form. That's, that's sufficient for guiding our, our decisions and holding our, our shared values, our intentions. So there, there needs to be some kind of a shared philosophy that guides us forward. We need some kind of a um, meta science or a way to bring in hypotheses or knowledge, like a way for us to know and aggregate what we know and how we're gonna organize that organize what we think we know in a way that we can disprove it and evolve it over time. We need some kind of a structure um, because when we go from talking about a meta project to actually needing to like bring funds in and then like allocate them to projects and things we care about or interface with other organizations or make an agreement or anything like that, we need, we need a, at least a minimum viable structure. And then that, that idea of a story we can find ourselves in, a way to identify 
a guiding philosophy, set of values, et cetera, a way to track our knowledge, and then a, a structure that can, can be continually involved to allow for emergence as things change and they're gonna change really rapidly. So that structure is gonna be continuously changing. There's the, then there's one more element, which is like a, a way or a process, whatever language you wanna call that, but the basic way that we, that we work together that allows us individually re to relate rightly to the circles we're engaged in, the circles to rightly relate to each other, and the whole to rightly be able to relate to itself. Um, so, okay, so now, now let's, let's design like a game, an experiment, we can call this whatever, we, we can call it a, we can call it a, um, Can call it a meta project, and and Pete, um, you've proposed some some basic um, some basic rules that we've we've worked on a little bit together. Do you by chance have those handy? I I do. <laughs> um, and having worked on the meta science a little bit, I've come to believe that decentralization itself should be decentralized. Yep. So I don't think there's one set of rules. I think Correct. there are um, several sets of rules that work together. So cohesive. So, so can you? So do you want to propose one potential set of rules that people could choose that would cause the whole the whole game to kind of work? Uh, yeah. I was just putting them on a website as we talk as we spoke. But um, let me let me try copying and pasting here. Uh, so I ended up recasting this out of the meta project to be a little bit more general than that. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't refer to the meta project. It just means that. And then for federate, I have some bullets. Okay, so we've got this idea that each of us as, um, so let's, let's go through some, some idea, like some formational ideas. And we have 10, we have 10 minutes. So, so let's just outline some ideas. We've each indicated the, we've kind of started to align our stories and indicated the areas we, we'd be most passionate about collaborating in. Now let's, we're gonna outline some structural ideas and then the idea is for whoever wants to play, we can start to activate the game this week. So, so the idea is that each of us comes in not as part of an existing organization, but our first identity is as sovereign individuals. So each of us belongs to organizations um, each of us is doing working on different things. You know, Pete's working on CSC, Trey's working on Winfinity, Marianne's doing some work with planetary care. Um, oh, Wendy, I just saw a uh, Wendy requested a minute, so I'm going to be silent for a minute or more. And Wendy, you can. I was just thinking that it was important for us to catch up with each other's energies just for a moment. Um, just it's timely. Thank you, Wendy. So, Wendy, I'm going to um, respond to your wonderful 
injection by um, canning what we were going to do next since we have eight minutes left. Um, Pete and I, Pete and I will work to, um, Pete, would you be willing to work with me this week to articulate together one set of potential patterning that we could present to the group? Uh, so first, first of all, Jordan, I really appreciate you modeling um, sovereignty. And um, so yes, I'd, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for accepting that request for guidance. Um, so, so let's respond to Wendy's uh, uh, encouragement to pause. So Pete, Pete and I will, will work together. If anybody else would like to join that conversation um, on patterning and, and one set of proper way to relate to each other and kind of federate, um, feel free to just drop a note in the chat. Let's take one more minute of, of just quiet to kind of arrive and see how we're, we're feeling after this uh, kind of deep reflective work on stories and being vulnerable about, about the, the areas we'd like to participate. Let's just take another minute to reflect and then we'll, we'll close out just with a few minutes of dialogue. Maybe I'll just start the dialogue by expressing the deepest gratitude that I'm feeling for being with such an incredibly insightful, intuitive, skilled, amazing group of people with such diverse perspectives. And I'm, I'm really grateful for the interruption that we just had and those kind of interruptions that we're getting good at doing in some of these meetings. So it's really, really astoundingly wonderful to be with you people. And I'm uh, just really grateful for each one of you. Kilu, would you, would you be willing to, um, hold space for the next five minutes to just kind of uh, intuitively guide our, our little closeout dialogue and then um, uh, just maybe give me 30 seconds to say goodbye and invite some action this week. Sure, can you tell me a little more on how you see it? Because I can hear it in different ways. Just, yeah, let's just be together a little bit. We've got, we've got like five minutes left. Let's just be together a little bit. And I was just wanting uh, someone other than me to hold that space. Thank you. Sure. So anybody, anybody feel free to chime in. Let's just start by literally being together. And let's start by actually following Jordan, your cue on gratitude. Surely there's some gratitude in us. And let's become aware of what we're grateful for in this moment. And if it helps to put a time context, we came here and it's the first of the rest of the meetings and we're here. And we did the exercises about ourselves and humanity and the community. And we looked at what we would be interested in contributing. And those are probably still ongoing conversations in our heads and in our hearts. Maybe let's also just look at each other with eyes closed or eyes open 
however we want to be present to that something amazing is happening here already. And it's happening kind of above and beyond us as much as inside us. Let's just feel that. And then in addition to feeling that, let's know that. And let's know that in our bones. It's a particular kind of knowing. And let's, as we are with each other, let's feel that group that we're in and all the threads and connections to other groups and other people and other thoughts and other ways of being and beings and you know from pets to any others that all walk as this this ball of manyness of us And let's, let's ask, how did we get so high to be here and to be asking these questions? And let's ask, what does it take to give ourselves even more permission to show up as our highest selves? And now our most elevated consciousness and being and action and courage and bravery to just show up here. And to shine and to connect and to dare to be well together. And back to you, Jordan. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. Wendy, thank you for redirecting. I'm really grateful. Kila, thank you for holding a little bit of space. Um, so we have one group that's going to do a little work on patterns. Um, would, would anybody else be willing to join me to try to make some sense of everybody's responses on contributions um, to see if we could think a little bit about configurations? Judy? Eric, Jonathan, sorry, can anybody, anybody else, would anybody else like to join Stacey that? Stacy was also putting her hand up. Stacy. We've got Wendy E in chat too. Wendy E, great. That's perfect. Michael, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so, so that's fantastic. So for, for this, for this week, um, We've got a couple great things that'll move us forward with both um, some sense making around people's desired, passionate areas of contribution and how we could kind of fig configure that well. And then with, with Pete and an, a separate group, we'll do some, some work on patterning and structures that people could choose to voluntarily adopt if those seem wise. Um, and then next week, maybe we'll practice, um, maybe we can finish getting those kind of formed up in minimum viable form. And then um, we could pick a little project to do together. Um, we can pick those projects individually, little individual quests. We can take those pods and pick little quests. And then we could maybe pick something that those stack up into and, um, and start to test our muscles a little bit and, and grow. So thank you, everybody. It was a Wonderful, wonderful call. Thank you for, for being present. Thanks for deep, doing the deep work to look inside of yourselves and reflect on the stories. And I think we'll, we'll be um, surprised at how fast we can move if we can configure ourselves right. So really looking excited to these next couple of weeks. If anybody would like to stay for 30 minutes, we'll, we'll break promptly at 2.30. Um, if anybody would like to stay for a time, we'll do a retro on the meeting today.
to look at um, look at what happens, talk about it a little bit, look at what we can do better um, next week and the next steps, and then do any planning that we need for this week. So anybody's welcome to stay and be a part of that if you would like. Anybody that has to go, love you all, and uh, look forward to communicating with this week. See you soon, Jerry, bye. Richie. Lisa, thank you so much. Beautiful. Hello. Okay, so just for the recording, it's 2.03 here and we're rolling into our section on retro on the meeting today, looking at what we can, can do better next week, potentials for how we could structure our meeting next week to advance and then any assignments and kind of planning we could do together for this week. So let's let's start with a few minutes just of uh, reflection on the meeting today. Pete, what are the questions that you would like us to answer about the meeting today? You've thought a lot about retros. Uh, to, uh, so so one thing um, is that we're doing different kinds of meetings. So. Um, so a thing that you can do if you always have the same format is talk about the, the format. Uh, for for this uh, this meeting, what I would I would just ask people how did how did it feel? What happened for you? What did you perfect. like? Yeah, perfect. What made this what made this exercise easier for me? Like this was very comfortable for me, but partly because when we went out to the breakout rooms. I chose to tell the story that brought me here. So I had already been thinking about that. So when we were then asked to start writing down, I, I wasn't coming in cold and that made it very comfortable. Uh, <clears throat> I thought your guidance, Jordan, was genius. Um, I it so aligns with um, my internal sense of how to harvest the best from all of us. So, I mean, it was delicious to be part of that. And, and I get the sense that it, it has a high likelihood of doing exactly what you're predicting, which is accelerate us and kind of seatbelt needed. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm glad your soul was fed today. I think a valuable part of it was the conscious leadership to reflect on our talents and our differences and how we brought both of those to the collective to increase the understanding of everyone. Thanks, Judy. For me, it was, I was profoundly grateful in the process of when you were guiding us through the writing to the questions. And I think it did what Jonathan said also that it, it, it probably brought us further faster. And what I felt missing, and it's a light missing, it's not like making it wrong, but I now really wanna know how, I really wanna know what people found for themselves. And I also really wanna know more about how people sort themselves and you know what becomes possible for that. And some of that's just curiosity and it will get solved after time, but that's how I feel. And sorry if I didn't raise my hand and keep, maybe you were ahead of me, I see your hand is up. My apologies. That was partially by design, Kilu, to leave us all wanting to know more about each other. Pete? 
Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Kilu. Um, uh, I'm I'm uncomfortable to have this reflection, um, uh, and it's a meta uncomfort actually. Uh, so, I'm, I I'm, I get uncomfortable when we're when we only say happy, easy things, or or positive, wonderful things, or <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, it uh, the the discomfort of the meta discomfort. I'm not sure which one. It, it's actually around. Darn, we we're not quite comfortable with each other enough to to say, "Yeah, this didn't work for me." Or um, so I I have. Uh, so I guess I'll keep going in that vein. Um, I also wanted to note, um, uh, Kilo made an interesting suggestion and uh, we, we ended up ignoring it, um, which I think is fine uh, or not fine. Um, but she said, I would waterfall, um, you know, how, how did it go? Um, so we didn't do that. Um, oh, sorry, I, I missed that. We could, well, we could still do that. We could back up and do that. So waterfalling gets gets more information faster. Um, if we go person by person, we get a different kind of information, deeper information, slower. Um, they're both good. Um, so uh, personally, I'm sad that <laughs> I'm both sad that we didn't do it, Keely's uh, suggestion, and that we're doing it this way. I I like both of them, and I wish we could have done it the other way, both both ways. Um, uh, uh, so then a, a couple things, uh, a couple things for me, I was, uh, I, I liked the writing exercise. I liked, um, the, uh, the, the push to, to like, think about something and think about something different. I felt a little unsafe. I wasn't, I wasn't clear on where those answers would go. And I know I answered at least one or two, um, in a way that I would consider wrong and private. And I'm, if we're going to share these answers, I'm not sure that we will, but if we're going to share these answers, I actually just have to clip those out and not, not, not contribute them to the whole. Um, uh, another weird thing is the uh, where are you uh, thing. I, I'm pretty sure was meant to be um, uh, meant to be metaphorical and I could only answer it. I've got a very literal brain. Um, for, it's a, one of my superpowers and one of my super weaknesses. And so I could only answer, I'm in San Diego, California, <laughs> which I think is not the answer we were looking for. But um, uh, it, it's really hard for me not to answer a direct question with uh, a very literal answer. Um, uh, that did, you know, as we got broader from just me, where are you, to where are humans and where is the project, it, I was able to answer a little bit more um, uh, broadly. Um, another thing is, uh, some of you know, I, I hate breakouts. Um, uh, Wendy Elford and I have talked at length about, um, I started to talk at length. We've talked a lot and we're starting to uncover a little bit of why I dislike breakouts. One of them is in a short time, I, I have a hard time doing anything for a short time. It, something big in a short time doesn't fit for me. So it's like, yeah, take a couple minutes and get to know each other. It's like, yeah. I would rather take an hour or 90 minutes to get to know, know people. And, you know, I'm just getting started after three or four or five minutes. Um, so, uh, so I was a little bit rebellious in our first breakout um, as I usually am, um, which is fine. Um, it worked out pretty well. Um, uh, the, the other, the other thing that I've, that Wendy and I have kind of uncovered is that um, psychologically neurologically or whatever i i'm i it's it's almost a, uh it's almost like being add i i much rather see the interactions of the whole group rather than the interactions of two or three people so when we have all of us together in a room it seems like a sub optimization for me to split into a small group and then miss all the rich interaction that we could be having because we're all in the same time and place, we're just partitioned off. I really like, um, uh, it, and it's a difficult art to get enough interaction between everybody 
because you know you don't have enough time and space but i really like the art and the result of of large scale interaction um, rather than sub optimizing into small scale interaction which is not to say i don't love small scale interaction i love that too but it seems like we could do that in other places and now i apologize for taking so much time and all that no and that's uh Please do not apologize. That was very great. Really like I really like that closing challenge, um, specifically that idea that um, if we set up the decentralization properly, there will be a lot of small group interaction in other places, and then there might be something really unique that could happen when we take time to be together, and we shouldn't um, suboptimize that. So, yeah, that's that's great. Let's let's do um, it's we're we're 13 minutes in, um, and I don't think it's too late to miss our waterfall opportunity that Kilo suggested. And I apologize, Kilo, I wasn't looking at the chat. So so let's let's couple um, let's go ahead and do that. So so Kilo, I'm going to go back and look at your note that I missed. Or a oh, would would waterfall gather this? How was it? Okay, great. Yeah, let's try that. So let's gather this via be a waterfall um, so and, and let's ask the specific question so pete you you wanted to ans ask basically how was it how did it feel for you correct yeah okay great so let, let's take uh let's take two minutes to reflect on that so we can each have time to get a good answer in there what's the question how 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 was it how did it feel for you how was the meeting how did it feel for you All right, I was still writing. I find I have a lot of feelings about this meeting. So I guess good. Take uh, 30 seconds. Take, uh, let's take a couple minutes here just quietly to scan some of those responses.
Interesting. Love it. Thank you. It's interesting. Um, it's interesting to note the two, the two impulses there on uh, the deep curi curiosity to know what others were thinking and responding in the writing exercise. And then a few people remarking that they felt unsafe because they weren't sure if they'd be asked to share what they were writing. So it's a, it's a really uh, kind of neat tension. Um, it shows that there's a lot of vulnerability inside of us that we're not comfortable expressing and there's other people that really want to know. <laughs> so that's a really interesting, uh, beautiful tension. Hmm. Eric, would you like to uh, would you like to take a couple minutes to uh, express what you mean by needs consciousness? Yeah, because it's hard to put it in like it's it's a thing that I experienced over years doing nonviolent communication, um, where it's about really being open to what people need and being present for it and really receiving it without putting it in polarization necessarily with somebody else. Like, are oh, you want that? Oh, and you want that? That's not possible to put it together. No, just being there for the needs as they express to others. And I mean, in, in nonviolent communication, they put a difference between strategies and, uh, and, and needs, for instance, like a strategy, I have a need for uh, expression and uh, I, I and a strategy could be I am gonna shout really angrily at you but that's just one way to express another way could be uh, I, I I want uh, to feel safe and, and and find one person who I trust and express really honestly and and then uh, digest my experience before I come back to the person I'm angry too and I, I bring it back in a way that's that's easier to receive for instance but it it's not that one is more valuable than the other it's just there's if you get stuck on the strategies or solutions or problems uh, there's no space no open space for needs and needs is not it's not something to pin down it's just giving awareness and being able to see all the different perspectives, all the different ways of being. And it, it, it's hard also to say, because if I say I yearn for needs, consciousness, it seems like I'm saying it's not there, while I experience a lot of awareness of what people express in their needs. But it's more about this kind of opening up to oh, all the per perspectives can happen at the same time, can be there and it can be present for you and present then for you and present then for you without the tension needing to be resolved immediately. It's just, first of all, giving presence yeah. and being with all the different ways of being and really giving that space enough. Thanks, Eric. That was, that was really Sorry. articulately expressed in two minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jonathan? Yeah, I, I, I think I'll go ahead, Jonathan. I, I completely agree. I think um, the fact that most of us on this planet don't know what we need in any particular moment makes us um, act on our emotional reaction to what we need without realizing that that reaction isn't getting our need met. So we keep on acting out of the need and not getting the need filled, which I think explains a lot of the nuttiness of news and the way people behave. Um, I find it difficult to know what my needs are at any given moment, so I get it. So I, my hand, I like. Yes, Eric. Yay. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Jonathan. Stacy, then Wendy, and then um, I'd like to save a 
few minutes uh, for discussing this week if we can. So, Stacy, Just real quickly, um, when Eric said about the need to dissolve the tension immediately and not giving it enough time, that touches something that I've been thinking about, which I, I find sometimes very well-meaning people like as, and I don't, have, I mean, I fight back. I'm, I'm just saying this in general. Sometimes somebody will express something and somebody else will look to make that, oh, it's okay. You know, it, like there's judgment in where they are in the fact that they're even saying it's okay when it's obviously okay because we're all coming from different places. And I just, wanted to kind of bring that into awareness since Pete said we should he wants to hear the uncomfortable stuff I think we have to watch ourselves to not give permission when it's not even been asked Wendy thank you Stacy and um, there's something turning up here about tension between all the different information streams and just sitting in one to be able to not harvest but just let it soak into us a little bit um so i'm feeling like i'm not paying attention to the chat um i wanted to see what it was that people were contributing um and then i wanted to be able to go inside me and see how i was responding to all of that and then reflecting on that what i was needing to get met in the moment and then making something of that too soon <laughs> so there's a lot of like stopping, I think, and then just us then reflecting on what just happened. And I've experienced that in clean language groups where it's like stopping and then what what just happened then. So what just happened in what um, was shared then by Stacey was the drama triangle for me. It's like, oh, what am I making of it? What am I, why am I saying it's okay? Because that makes me feel okay. It's not about you, it's about me. <laughs> And just stopping in a moment and saying, what was it? Because we've got very skilled people who are very good at it. And from the times, the odd moments that I actually do it, um, um, I'm reflecting on myself and not, not trying to make myself feel good, but feel good just as a matter of the process that we had, that I got feedback about what I did as useful. I'm thinking, oh, it was quick. It was needed. It delivered value. Um, and I don't need to push myself into that. So there's something about stopping, looking at the chat, what's happening in that, just choosing a moment out and saying what just went down there that will help us learn more quickly as a group. Um, and ambiguity and tension and not getting that right each time and stories always. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. I, I felt a tension between appreciating the questions and the self-examination that it elicited, but then a disappointment that I didn't have a chance to explore mm. with the group, the collective responses to the individual responses. Yeah. And so I felt we missed perhaps an opportunity for some type of dialoguing or some yeah. um, ability to tie the stories together or the perspectives and experiences together. Thanks, Judy. I think that's a, that's a, um, you can hear the hunger or desire in the group, which is great. And so I think that's a wonderful invitation that we could maybe make. Maybe there's a, a group that could think about how to invite those who want to share parts of their stories and how they, how they align to be able to do that. Um, and, and I think that's, Okay, so so let's let's I'll I'll include that uh, let's let's include that in our our comment here. So we've got just three minutes left, and I want to um, start start practicing what uh, a few of us thought might be good to to keep time boundaries. So I'm going to make a couple um, hypotheses here for this week. Um, um, one is is I think. Pete and I have an action item to look at the chat and see who wanted to be part of the pattern conversation and put out a first set or hypothesis of, of patterns um, for the group to relate to. Um, second, 
Second, we have a group that responded on the chat looking at the different uh, areas of passion or contribution that people are interested in. Um, I think we need to be careful not to organize that from the top down, but it does need some sense making. Um, so, so maybe that's the type of thing where um, we have a group that that's willing to to do a little sense making work on that. We could maybe um, make some suggestions. Um, Pete, I think in our in our patterning, we can be careful that when we do that, we don't end up setting up pods from the top down. So we can just kind of maybe illustrate one way that people could choose to voluntarily configure themselves if they wanted to. And then we could offer up a set of patterns that they could voluntarily adopt if they wanted to. Um, three, uh, um, Judy, I'd be willing to have a conversation with you if you'd be willing to have a conversation with me and maybe Wendy E and anybody else that would like to join on the story, those next steps that you were just saying, how we could issue a, a voluntary opportunity if people wanted to share those forward and kind of learn from each other. So maybe we could have a short, have a design conversation on how to do that and how to make that kind of an ongoing rolling part as people come in. Um, would that be, does that sound wise? Yes, I think so. I'm, I'm okay. wondering also, I would expand on that perhaps not directly, but in the future, how do we make the group experience a greater learning experience for all of us? Um, collective learning in terms okay. of sharing of perspectives. Yeah, how we translate that into collective learning. Okay, beautiful. And then Jonathan dropped one more in, in there, which Jonathan, I agree. Once we get configured, we'll start looking at how to stack up little mini projects and how those align to, to something we're doing together so we can start building muscles. So beautiful. Is there anything, um, anything missing here? One comment that I would offer, it, it, Jerry's not on the call still, but I think he has some abilities to do some of that weaving of the collective interests and experiences of individuals with the context of others, both within our group and outside our group. And we might want to take advantage of that wisdom. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So that's that's like a weaving. And um, Wendy, I think uh, you have a little document in progress on kind of a, a weaving group that we can uh, we can look at how to tie those. So if anybody, I want to, I want to respect and try to practice good, uh, good meeting hygiene here and end on time. So if anybody else has anything, please, please drop it here in the chat as, as we go out. I'll, we, I'll uh, we need, uh, I, I will schedule the, the patterns hypothesis meeting. Um, I'll, I'll post uh, a poll um, in town square or something like that. We need points, uh, people to be point people on the other, the other ones. Okay, would anybody be willing to take point? And if not, I will. Anybody willing to take point on um, scheduling the um, circle or areas of contribution uh, meeting? Going once, going twice. Okay, that's me. I, I'm going to suggest that it's a failure mode for you to take it, Jordan. Thank you, Pete. Great. I'll, take it, I'll take it on. I'll take on for guidance. <laughs> Are you going to do it, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do a uh, um, that maybe that other uh, scheduling tool that uh, someone suggested, Mattermust. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so Michael, you're going to take the the sense making on areas of contribution, and then the one other meeting that we needed to schedule was. Um, me, Wendy, Judy, and whoever else responded in the chat on the stories. I think Kilu. Yeah. yeah. I'm um, happy to do this. Okay, great. Kilu, thank you so much. And Pete, my, my gratitude for um, your pattern watching. Okay, everybody. Um, those, those of us in the US have to try harder to make sure Wendy Alford can attend. So she's around from about 1 p.m. Pacific time or 4 p.m. Eastern time. Before that, it's literally like um, non-awake non <laughs> hours. Yeah. Okay, great. Beautiful. All right. Okay. Well, we're on our way. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, this was, this was beautiful. So nice to be with you. And
deep gratitude. Trey, thank you so much for, for being with us. And thank you also for staying behind to join us in this time of reflection. It's really nice to, to be with you. I invited uh, Paula to join us anytime as well. She seemed to have such a lovely spirit. So uh, much gratitude. I, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, we will we will see you soon. Much love. Thank you, everyone.